Hello and welcome to this episode of Fort Worth Forward. We're here at the Fort Worth Zoo where we're getting a behind the scenes tour of the new Predators exhibit. And we're gonna be joined by Ramona Bass and Mike Foraker with the zoo. We also have some other great guests, including Mike Brown of the YMCA of Metropolitan Fort Worth and Josie Via Singleton, who has Eat This Fort Worth. I'm excited that you're here with me today. Let's go. Now I'm honored to be joined by Ramona Bass, who's chair of the Fort Worth Zoological Association, and Michael Foraker, who's the executive director here at the Fort Worth Zoo. Welcome, y'all. Thank, Thank you. We're glad, glad to have you. Thank you. This is fun for me. The zoo is always a fun place to, to go bring my children. I came as a child. Everybody has a special memory, I think, of the zoo. Uh, and Ramona, you've been involved with the zoo for a long period of time. A long time. Tell us that story of when you first <laughs> came to the zoo and what you thought about the Fort Worth Zoo. Well, I've always been an animal lover. Yep. I grew up in San Antonio and on a ranch in South Texas, so wildlife's always been part of my life. And my husband, my new husband, brought me to the zoo, and it was very depressing. You might, what year was that? You want to tell 1984. It? Okay, okay. Very depressing, cages, concrete. I was horrified, and not knowing me as well as he does 40 years later, <laughs> my husband Lee said, well then, why don't you do something about it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure he knew what he was getting into, but it's been that long. It's been that long. Mm -hmm. A 40 year, I would say, love affair it with is. the zoo. It's a love with affair. With animals and everything mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. Well, I know I speak for the community appreciative of all the things that you've done, because you did do something about it. <laughs> and kind of tell us, like over the last 40 years, like your involvement, what's, what that's meant for the, for, for the Fort Worth Zoo. Well, for me, it's been a, it's been a life's work. Yeah. It's been a joy. Yeah. Uh, I, I love every minute of it. Um, I have some incredible people working for me. Mike Foraker, best zoo director in the world, in my opinion. Yes. And um, I think we just sort of took it one step at a time yeah. and started cleaning up, cleaning up, cleaning up. And the most important thing that happened was, of course, the privatization and mm -hmm. the public-private partnership yeah, that right. we ended up with in 91. That, yes. Which let's, was a battle. Let's talk about that. Okay, Not we the can. battle part, but Ugh. the good part. But we can talk about right. the battle part. But I think the model that you have here uh, that y'all done with the zoo is what makes things work here in, in Fort Worth. Oh, yeah. oh, and yeah. this is sort of the first model out of it. It is. You, there was a, it was a partnership that was done. Tell us a little bit about how that came together and why it's been so important to the city. Well, Mayor Bob Bolin mm -hmm. was a great supporter of ours. Okay. And this lovely Bert Williams, who was on the, and I know he's yes. sick, so yeah. I send him out a prayer. Um, but they were my biggest supporters. And then I got Kit Moncrief involved mm -hmm. and Whitney Moore. And we sort of decided, let's do this. Right. And the city itself, most people were like, who are these girls that think they know what they're doing, right? But um, we, it was a time in our world where it, cities needed to take care of what cities ought to be doing. Yes. And the city of Fort Worth knew that. Yes. And they knew that if we privatized the zoo, that we would be able to do what needed to be done for the zoo. We'd raise the money. Right. And the city still owns the zoo, but we manage the zoo. That's right. And so it, it's easier for a private organization to manage day to day. And the fundraising, the, the other fundraising that you do, yes. is a huge part of it. Yes. And and we've raised a lot of money. Yeah. Um, but it's been, uh, to me, it's been a wonderful journey. And when Mike came along, it really did actually, it really changed everything because we went through three or four directors. Right. Okay. Which you may not remember. I don't remember. It was maybe a little bit. Yes. What year did were you did you come here, Michael? I started in January of 1993. Okay. Yeah. And I, what what existed at that point in time, and then what's been built out since then? Well, I was a interim director of a small okay. zoo in Tennessee, yeah. and interested in conservation is my passion. Yes. And they wanted to add to conservation programs here. So when I got here, there was a, had been a major change because I had worked with the Fort Worth Zoo over the years and had, and really wasn't that interested in coming <laughs> until I come down and saw the changes they were making. And we got involved in conservation and built our programs and that brought in new and different animals and it just, it all came together. Yes. It's and how, a, how is that conservation from that perspective? What are some of the major sort of wins that you see mm -hmm. from the conservation efforts? Here? Oh, we have, we have done so much. We're, we're probably working in about 17 different countries now, but one of the, one of the key things we have done, forwards who can't save elephants in Africa by itself. Mm -hmm. right. So we have formed nonprofits, the International Elephant Foundation being one, 
that's brought together people with the same interest and they pool their money together and we are making a difference in Africa. And, mm -hmm. and I could go on with the rhinos and mm -hmm. iguanas in the Caribbean and many different species and a lot of Texas species that yeah. we're breeding and putting back in the wild now. Well, I, I think what you've hit on is that we're making a bigger difference than just Fort Worth, Texas. Right. This, is, this zoo is making a difference around the world because we are involved in so many conservation yes. efforts and I know that's leadership across the board making that happen. And that, um, gives us a, a, a wider voice right. in the world and what we're doing, and I know you're involved. Um, we've also had um, a big fundraising campaign Ooh. over the last number of years yes. called A Wilder Vision. Yes, A Wilder Vision. And we're filming this before a big announcement mm -hmm. or opening, I guess not out, but opening in a couple of weeks. Yes. Predators of Africa and, and Asia. And Asia, yeah. right? What is that going to do for the zoo? Well, it's the third phase. Okay. We raised $130 million. Well, and remind what was the first phase? The first the phase was the African savanna. Right, right. Second Where phase. Where everybody can come and feed giraffes and do all that, so right? Much fun. So much fun, yes. And the second phase was the elephant springs, yes. which, as you know, our elephant herd is growing. Uh, third generation imitates yeah. the wild. It's really quite, quite special. It's great. And this is third, and then next comes forests and jungles of the world, and okay. that will be in the center of the zoo where we do have so many trees and sh so much shade, okay. Okay. which is important about this zoo. I think it's one of the things that makes us special is the amount of shade and greenery that we have here. Because we've got some hot summers. We do yes. have some hot <laughs> summers. But you want to bring everybody out and see it. But that's tell us right. about predators and what that's going to look like. Okay, you tell, you tell give Mike, us a sneak peek. Yes. Well, we're bringing in some species that either haven't ever been in the zoo or were here many, many years ago. Okay. Uh, primarily being cheetah, wild dog, clouded leopard has never been in the mm -hmm. Fort Worth Zoo, beautiful animal, uh, African leopards, uh, we actually have a, a young spotted and black Yes, we have uh, a melanistic leopard. female. A melanistic. Is that melanistic. Melanistic. And their brother and sister. Okay. She's the black one. Okay. And he's a normal color leopard. Okay. It's really fun. Which you don't see very often. No, you yes, do not. Yes. Okay. So that's exciting. Yeah. And all of that is on top of our, we're bringing, we brought our lion Lions. pride back that was loaned out. Uh, our striped hyenas are coming back. Our mm -hmm. tigers are coming back. And then throughout the exhibit, we've got African cranes and storks that are all actually predators as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So a variety of things. Um, what is something that you, uh, I'm very excited about that, what's coming and what's, you know, what's next and, and, and very excited about what, what's something when you, the passion behind what you do, you want people to walk away with when they visit the zoo? I want people to walk away happy. I don't want them to walk away depressed yeah. like most zoos. Yeah. I think we can empower people. Mm -hmm. I think we can incentivize people through introducing them and giving them a love of animals. Right. And right. incentivize them to be part of the solution. There are solutions out there. There are. And mm -hmm. we just have to work together to make things happen. Not yeah. the crazy lunatic ideas of you know people are going away and that's how we're going to solve the problem no we're yeah, here we're here and we've right. got to work with what we have mm -hmm. and find ways to have animals and people coexist, coexist. and that requires science-based solutions mm -hmm. it requires creativity and i think if you introduce children to animals then they fall in love with animals mm -hmm. and then perhaps they'll want to do something yes. in the future yeah and plus it gets them outside you know the disconnect between children and nature now is really scary yeah, definitely. Really scary. Definitely. And, and I, what I love about this is for many people, uh, you know, I've been privileged to go on African safari right. to see them in the wild. Exactly. For many people, never get never. to do that. This is as close they'll get to a wild animal in, yes. in a setting. And it's fun to see the faces of the kids and the adults and everything else that, that come here. But Mike, you might tell about yes. what, how important zoos are and why, why we feel that we are not only important in conservation, but the future of many species. And I'll, I'll start with how important our visitors are because yeah, they, they are. let us, mm -hmm. make, enable us to be able to do the research and conservation. And population of animals in zoos, which are disappearing in the wild, mm -hmm. we're able to do research and develop drugs, vaccines that benefit the wild. Mm -hmm. You can't do that research in a wild population. It's right. just not possible. Right. But in zoos, throughout many species, we're discovering things that are actually benefiting the wild populations because they get many of the same diseases mm -hmm. humans do and, and they have no treatment unless we find it in a zoo. Find it then, that's, that's wonderful. Well, thank y'all for sharing a little back behind the scenes with us here and allowing us to, to tape out here today. And listen, I know for generations to come because of y'all's stewardship, 
more people will get to, more kids and grandkids, et cetera, will get to spend time here. And I, I'm, I know I'm thankful for it. So thank you all very much. And we're yeah. thankful for Thanks your support for and, the, and the city council and the city of Fort Worth. It's, it's a great partnership. It's a great partnership. Yeah. And, and uh, for years to come, I hope, I hope we can continue to that's build what on I that keep success. telling him. <laughs> years to come. <laughs> years to come. We have great support from, from not only the city government, but our, our community. Community, yes. for sure. That's why yeah. we've been able to do this. And it this. sounds I like agree. worldwide, too, from a lot of different organizations and other things. Yeah, but the community the behind us, and that yeah. really counts. That does, for sure. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank you, Thank Thank you all for you. letting us be here today. Thanks Thank so you, much. Michael. Thank you. And now I'm with Mike Brown, who's president and CEO of the YMCA of Metropolitan Fort Worth. Welcome, Mike. Thank you. Thanks for being here yeah, today. Yeah, it's been good. Um, you are somewhat a, a, a newbie to Fort Worth. I am. Two Got and a half years. Two and a half years. Um, but we'll talk about all the good things that have happened because of that. <laughs> but you, where did you come from? So uh, I always say everybody doesn't want to hear that I'm from California. No, well, uh, I am yeah. from uh, Central California okay. uh, in the Valley. Okay. Uh, so I was trying to tell people the part that I'm from is horses, dairy cattle, uh, cotton fields and oranges. There you go. Uh, so that's where I grew not up. Not far off from Texas. No, a little not bit. at no, all. No, that's yes. I try to, <laughs> people think automatically that there I came you. out of San Diego or LA, but uh, I recently came here from New York. Okay, New York. Yeah. So, what were you doing up in New York? So I've been with the Y 32 years okay. since I was uh, 18 years old. Yeah, wow. Uh, and had a position in Syracuse that I was, was there about two and a half years. My wife got sick and um, when she passed away, the kids and I said, 25 inches of snow, right. not going to do it. And mm. uh, they all wanted to move back. They were born in Georgia. Okay. Uh, I was in Houston at one yeah. time, and so I said, I want to go back to Texas. Okay. And believe it or not, the two CEOs retiring in Texas was Austin and Fort Worth. And? And I did not apply to Austin <laughs> <laughs> uh, and came through the process here. So it's, it's been great. That's great. Well, we're happy to have you yeah. here in Fort Worth. Um, what are some of the changes you've seen or what's happened in the last two years since, since you got here? Yeah, well, I, I, you know, honestly, it's not just changed for the Y, it's yeah. been changed for the whole region. Sure, okay. I mean, even when I came on, there's so many new leaders, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's council, school boards, nonprofit leaders, myself. Um, there so did that, seem to be a, a, around that time a there big was. shift. Yeah, right after just kind that. of that 2020, yes. uh, you know, people got out retired, of COVID or get out of COVID. Happened. Yes, yeah. 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 So I came in, I feel like at a really good time uh, to really allow the Y to, to kind of move ahead past the COVID closings and loss in revenues. But, you know, for the Y, I walked off an elevator on the fourth floor of the downtown Y with mauve fabric uh, wallpaper uh -huh. and an old purple couch. Uh -huh. and a bunch of old uh, furniture, and I realized I just stepped back into the 80s. Yes, uh, yeah. And so for us, it's all been about kind of saying, okay, this is a symbol mm -hmm. that it's time for us to make improvement, time for us to challenge the status quo, mm -hmm. time for us to do our jobs differently, and so we've been really working hard to modernize who the YMCA is today. Okay. And I, I think Fort Worth's been doing the same thing. I th across, yes, across yeah. the board, just looking yeah. at systems processes. Right. What, what we're you know, coming from New York to here outside the physical building, yeah. well, what are some of the other things that maybe needed updating, changing the model uh, to make it work here, or work for uh, uh, the why as it is in 2023 yeah, and beyond? I, I, beyond buildings. Yes, yeah. yeah so yeah. I think uh, people always ask me what's the hardest part of the job, and right. I always say it's people. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you can change a building with paint. I can't change you with paint. Right. I can't just walk in and say, we're going to do it this way. And so you have to get buy-in. You have to get people that are willing to look at things differently, make the changes, uh, have the positive attitude about where we're going. And um, that took time. Right. But I think we, we did it well. We, we really realigned our culture and really tried to be a part of the community in a much deeper way. And people have, in the Y, have just become so much more supportive, understanding, staff have gotten more excited about their jobs and the difference that they make in the community. And I think a lot of it just had to do, we were stagnant. Right. The Y was kind of re-identifying itself as to what it was because so many people thought of it as a gym and swim. Right. Um, and so you see that coming from other places, uh, there might have been really the same thing. Mm -hmm. And in every Y I've been in, it's just been an opportunity to teach people that 
there's so much more out there that we can be doing. Right. And so tell us about that yeah. because I think there is a big somewhat misnomer that it's still a gym and swim. Yeah. But y'all have a lot of programming. Tell us yeah. about some of that programming. Yeah. So I, I always try to tell people our, our focus areas are youth development, healthy living, social responsibility. Okay. So I get asked when I first got here, why are you wrapped up in homelessness or foster care or adoption? We have 160,000 people associated with us every day. Wow. If I can help other organizations get jackets, blankets, food, if I can help parents be educated and opening their home to a foster kid mm -hmm. that doesn't have a place to live, um, that, that there in itself uh, lets you know that it's not just a gym and a swim. Right. We, we want to do fitness well. We want to build healthy spirit, mind, and body. But we also want to make sure that families have access and places to gather, that dads have time to spend with their sons and a or daughters in a, in a society that we're all rushed and challenged. Mm -hmm. um, financial literacy, budgeting, mm -hmm. you know, the Y doesn't want to just give a scholarship away. Mm -hmm. We want you to also learn how to develop yourself and your family so that you can move forward mm -hmm. uh, and build resources for yourself so that we can use those funds to help other people. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't realize that. They don't realize you that. You know, thousands of people are coming through our, our facilities and our programs and our services that are beyond just going to the Y to work out or jumping in a pool to take a swim lesson. Right, right. And I, and I think, as you've sort of pointed, it's all ages too, right? It is. I know you we did, say yeah. cradle to grave. Cradle to grave, <laughs> cradle to grave. I know, the, 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 the silver sneakers, is that one of the That's programs? Right, yes, yeah. for over yeah. 55 that, yeah. that come so in. Yeah, so we have thousands of seniors in our silver sneakers program mm -hmm. that are 100% paid for by the insurance company. Oh, wow, okay. So we just opened up the 100,000 square foot Y in Bedford. Okay. Um, which they built through one of their bonds. Okay. Great partnership. Okay. But all the seniors have access now okay. to health programs, uh, working out, classes, swimming, cooking. Mm -hmm. They're taking all kinds of uh, um, playing games, having family nights, yeah. potlucks, all those things are happening and it's all 100% paid for. And they just will bring their insurance. They'll and bring they'll, their yeah. insurance card, it scans in once they're signed up and we get paid, the only downfall mm -hmm. is we get paid by the visit. Okay. So we really try to make sure that we have enough to do right. so that our seniors are coming in because that's what helps support all the work. Uh, everything else. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the Bedford yes. uh, location. Are there any other sort of locations on the horizon or things you want to talk about yeah. there? Yeah, uh, we are um, relocating the Northwest Y in okay. Saginaw. Okay. Um, and so we're about five or six million dollars um, lacking on the funding, but it's a thirty million dollar project. The okay. school district, Eagle Mountain Saginaw, Fort Worth has been involved, um, local municipality, and donors. And okay. we're almost there. Uh, we are designing right now. We've already hired the architects. And then the one I'm, I'm most passionate about is getting East Side open. Okay. Uh, the East Side Y shut down in 2020. Okay. And it was uh, targeted to never open again. Wow. Um, and our Y did have a history of shutting down uh, facilities that weren't making a profit in a nonprofit. Okay. Uh, and that is. Where is that one located? Where's the East Side? Uh, located? East exactly. Side is on Sandy Lane. Okay. Um, and it is, uh, and then also uh, the McDonald Y, which was mm -hmm. built in partnership with uh, our community a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. East Side's another one of those. Okay. And so we actually are uh, getting ready to start construction this summer. Okay. Uh, and have big plans to serve the East Side community. That's, that's wonderful. And people are wanting it. They haven't had a Y in three years. Yeah. And there's not really a recreation place for them. So I I'm excited to provide that. Well, I'm excited y'all have it too. You know, we have city community centers. Yep in lots of locations and y'all do programming inside right. the community centers we but, partner but, well with everyone yeah yeah, yeah. but yeah. we can't build a community center everywhere correct so that's where i think the why comes in to fill that void where it yeah. can be and we bring city services to the why right. i mean so it's it is yeah. a great partnership from there someday i keep telling people like when i think out of the box uh -huh. i just think why can't we have these buildings and it just has all of our names on it <laughs> because our purpose is to serve and make yes. people's lives better right so it doesn't right. really matter to me who as right. long as I get the opportunity to see the, the, the people that are in those communities just have a better life. That's great. And, and I'm excited. We're working with Tarrant Area Food Bank, many of our cities, school districts, local nonprofits, and, and we're starting to really see partnerships take off. Well, I think that's a wonderful way to end this. I will say that you moved to Texas. I, I, I do want to throw this out, throw this out because you also, it, it changed lives in a lot of different ways, right? Yeah, to, yeah. You, you, 
uh, your, your, your children moved here and you found yeah, a new so wife. I, when, when my uh, wife passed away, yeah. she told me, do not, uh, you're too young to sit and, 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 and mourn for too long. Right. She go, and we had this conversation before it happened in uh, 2020, she passed away to brain cancer. Mm -hmm. And um, my kids said, Dad, we're moving. Yeah. And this is the last place you're going. And, I, and so find somewhere you're going to stay. Yeah. And, uh, so you I, found a Texan that's I, not letting you leave Texas. I, and now I, I, <laughs> I am getting married in August. Yeah. Uh, our family is combined. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, and she is a, a, a native and is not leaving. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I am here and have sealed that with uh, the board and the community. Well, so, we're glad yeah, to have you here exciting. in this community. I met her. She's very nice and yeah. wonderful and wish you the best of luck. Thanks Thank for you. being here yeah, today. Thanks I appreciate for having it. Me. Thank appreciate you. It. Now I'm joined by Josie Via Singleton, who is the founder of Eat This Fort Worth. Welcome, Josie. Hi, thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. We've been friends for a long period of time. We have. And I've watched all the great things that you've done over the years. Very proud of you. Thank what, you. And you're, you kind of got your mm -hmm. fingers in a lot of different things here in Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. Why Eat This Fort Worth? Why did you want to start that? Um, I started that over 10 years ago. Okay as just a fun outlet for myself mm -hmm. uh, to talk about all the great restaurants I was going to in Fort Worth at the time. And um, it just seemed like a fun little hobby. And it's kind of grown over the years to a full-fledged blog yeah. and my social media presence. And, um, and now all that has evolved into me starting the food tours in 2018. That's great. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. So yeah. Eat This Fort Worth, it's a blog, it's a, it's a website, you've got Instagram, you've got mm -hmm. everything that you're talking about what's going on in Fort Worth. So what are some exciting things that are happening here in Fort Worth in the, in the restaurant scene that you see? Uh, it, everything is so exciting. I feel like everything's always evolving. There's always the new restaurant. Um, is there a favorite that you have right now? Our there, favorites. There's so many yeah. right now, honestly. Uh, I just, uh, Austria 61 has been a really beautiful yeah. experience Adam to Jones's check place, out. for sure, yeah. Yes. Um, and then, you know, I've got my old favorites. You know, I love tacos. So, you know, I've got my salsa limon, my taco heads, all places like that. Um, but new wise, uh, I haven't been to Quince, but okay. I hear great things about okay. it. Okay, just around the corner from just the zoo. Just around the yes. corner. Yes. I've been to the one in San Miguel de Allende, yes. Me too. which yeah. was lovely. Uh, so I'm really interested to see how they translate that yeah. for us here in Fort Worth. That's, that's wonderful. Yes. What, what gets you excited about things here in Fort Worth? And, and maybe talk about from when you started the blog mm -hmm. and to now, what, what, what do you see what, that's different and exciting? I think what's so exciting for me is since I'm always looking for the, the new chef or the new restaurant or the new cuisine, it's so interesting to me to see many of the people that I've followed from the beginning and interviewed or, you know, went to their restaurant, how, how they've grown over the years yeah. Yeah. to see Sarah from Taco Heads. Oh, yeah go from her taco trailer to brick and mortar to now tequila and a second taco heads location that is just so and exciting the for distillery me or what and the they, distillery they, they you have, know yes, yes. and so uh and i see it now with people doing pop-ups mm -hmm. scotty scott yep. reginald roberts no. robinson yeah, um, had, yep, so many people yes. um that have taken their passion and been able to cultivate it, find an audience here in Fort Worth, and continue to grow. And that's nothing to say of our amazing craft barbecue yes, yeah. people, because like that's the story, you know, right, right. all of them have. All of them have. But mm -hmm. it is it is true. You see some uh, great people may start off as a sous chef somewhere, or maybe right. just in the kitchen, who now are, you know, Juan Rodriguez comes to mind, mm -hmm. and he's now gone on to do these great things. Right. And that's, I, it's, it's actually very exciting for me to see people that I know and have watched and you know, supported and cheered for mm -hmm. really succeeding in that part of the community. You do, you're doing food tours as part of yes. that. Tell us a little bit about that. What go, what's the preparation and what, what mm -hmm. do people see on these food tours? Um, so and these, taste and yes. everything. Yeah. So these food tours, I try to curate them um, by types of cuisine. So I've got a taco and margarita tour, mm -hmm. which is my first tour that I started 
which is so much fun um, because who doesn't love tacos and yes, margaritas? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's so much fun to do. I do a barbecue tour, mm. uh, which is great to shine a light on all the wonderful craft barbecue places we have here in Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. uh, we have several um, that have been nominated or named as uh, bar best barbecue joints uh, by Texas Monthly. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, very exciting. And then um, some I do by neighborhood. So I do a stockyards walking tour, okay. which is a great way to um, highlight the historical significance of the stockyards and walk and see everything. But then also, you know, take take a few take a few culinary breaks in between <laughs> and have some barbecue, have some tacos, and uh, really. Uh, elevate the whole stockyards experience for that, people. That's great. You also are very involved in the art world. You mm -hmm. want to talk about that Art Space 111 that you're involved in? Yes, yeah, so I've been working at Art Space 111 for about a year and a half and it's also so, so great like for many of the same reasons that I love promoting our restaurants and chefs here in Fort Worth. It's a really great opportunity to highlight our wonderful Texas artists because at Art Space, we represent over 30 artists, all from the state of Texas. Uh -huh. So it's very exciting. It's a small woman-run business, and um, I, I love talking about food, art, live music, all the things that make Fort Worth great. Cultural, very Co cultural. Just very yeah, cultural. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's right in line with um, my values and what I like to do. For for people that don't know where Art Space mm -hmm. want to where is it located? So we are located on the edge of downtown at 111 Hampton Street. Okay. It's a historical building from the 1920s. Okay. So it's a red warehouse. Uh, looks like a red warehouse. It did used to be a furniture warehouse. And um, now it's a beautiful art gallery and wedding venue space. 30 artists, they, yes. they rotate through or they're- No, we have uh, 30, over 30 that we represent. Okay. And then the founding, um, artists of Art Swiss 111 are Dennis and Daniel Blagg okay. and they're um, well-known Texas artists and Daniel Blagg actually still keeps the studio upstairs. Okay, so okay. So very convenient. For see him, him yeah. every day and you know, he's just painting away. Painting away, <laughs> yeah. keep, keep turning it out. Yeah. Well, I'll say this, we are sitting in a beautiful setting. We are. It doesn't go unnoticed to me that, about what you've worn today. That's a big zoo. Yes, it's, it's, that, yeah. That's very, it's I awesome to, that you, you yes. coordinated as part of that. Uh, where in, uh, uh, would, it's summer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's what the, sure. the summer, some great patios that people can go to to have a great meal or just a great scene. Do uh, you sure. have any suggestions for people? Oh, yes. Um, so I love the places that are by the Trinity River. Okay. I feel like it's, you know, it's a great, beautiful, natural resource here in Fort Worth. So uh, the Woodshed, uh, HG Supply, Press Cafe yeah. are some of my favorites. Um, and I like seeing the people, you know, toiling away on, on their bikes <laughs> or running by while I'm, That's where know, I run, so yeah. So where yes, I'm yeah. kicking back with a with cold beverage. Um, and uh, uh, some other spots that I like are uh, Panther City Barbecue mm -hmm. and Heim Barbecue have a yeah. really great family outdoor space, friendly yeah. outdoor space. You feel like you're at a picnic. That means you can let your kids run around. Yeah, on the, on the yeah, patio. there's a lot of that. <laughs> um, so uh, I really love those spaces. It just, you feel like you're at a picnic. You have great, great food, great yeah. atmosphere. And um, those, those are a few of my favorites. That's great. Well, yeah. thanks for being here today. Thanks yeah. for just shedding uh, some light on mm -hmm. some of the, all the culture that we talked about that exists here in Fort Worth that I think often is overlooked sometimes, but it's, it's you know, we have a lot of culture here and a lot of great just amenities in a lot of different ways that I appreciate what you're doing sort of uh, helping promote that. Sure. Thank you. Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Fort Worth Forward that we filmed here right at the Fort Worth Zoo. The zoo is a real treasure for our community. So I hope you get your friends, family, everybody out here this summer and tell my friends Walter, Brandon, and Corey hello for me. Y'all have a great time. See you later.